Hello everyone and welcome back to DC Central and in today's video we're going to be taking a look back at all six seasons of The Flash and ranking them from worst to the best, so let's discuss. So of course yesterday we received the season finale for The Flash Season 6. While it was an impromptu finale, it was still the finale of Season 6 nonetheless. So now we have six full completed seasons of The Flash, kind of, and uh, it seems like a good time to take a look back at all six of them and rank them from the worst to the best. Uh, of course, this is just my personal ranking. Of course, this isn't, you know, the right ranking. This is just how I feel about the seasons. Uh, so make sure you leave your personal ranking in the comment section down below as well. And we can discuss down there about our similarities and our differences. And with all that out of the way and all that said, let's dive into the ranking. So kicking off the list at number six is season four. Now, my list that I put together here was pretty easy to put together for me. It was the bottom two, however, that I went back and forth with. Uh, but this is how I, this is how it kind of came together and how it landed. Season four for me, while I was really excited about it going into it because I really enjoyed what seemed to be the lighter tone direction they were going for. Which yes, while this season did have a lighter tone, it was borderline stupid and silly most of the time, especially with the majority of episodes that we had here. Episodes like Luck Be A Lady and Honey I Shrunk Team Flash and the god-awful Run Iris Run episode. Um, this season just felt like it wanted to do these things where it wanted to go lighter, it wanted to be a bit more comic booky, but in the end, it was a very fine line between being lighthearted and being silly. And unfortunately, season four crossed over to the silly realm of things. Um, also, season four for me, I just think had a lot of missteps. I mean, while the season did have some good things in it as well, such as the addition of Ralph Dibney, who, I mean, I can't even say that's a full positive because most, I mean, I'd say a majority of the fan base didn't like Ralph initially. Um, but, you know, I, I, I enjoyed it myself, but I know a lot of people didn't. Uh, the season four suit was still to this day of course i did my flash suit ranking recently the season four suit is still to this day in my opinion the best suit they've done on the show the season just didn't really have any sense of direction and i feel like that they had this idea of wanting to be light-hearted and they also wanted to do the first non-speedster villain in the form of clifford devoe aka the thinker but that was completely skewed i mean the villain is really a big talking point when it comes to these cw shows and the sort of arc of the seasons because this villain of the thinker I was really interested to see, you know, the way they were pitching it was it's the fastest man alive versus the fastest brain alive, and that was a really interesting concept to me, but in the end, they just turned Clifford DeVoe, who was a really cool character initially, into just this super overpowered metahuman, which was just not what he was in the beginning, so it just made it easier to fight Team Flash, and I just thought that was really a waste, it felt ridiculous, it felt to me as if they were had this really strong concept for a villain, but didn't know how to stretch it out over 23 episodes, which is a common theme among the CW shows, uh, so they had to turn him into this over-the-top, super-powered metahuman, and it just made him a bit generic in the end. So overall, Season 4... I think it did aim high, it just didn't really la stick the landing in any way, shape, or form. Coming in at number 5 is Season 5. Now, I actually nearly, very nearly put this at the bottom of the list, because even though I do think this season is a quite significant ste step up in quality from Season 4, I do think this season is more boring than Season 4, just because I think while Season 4, yes, it is worse, it is still kind of fluffy fun sometimes if you can turn your brain off. Season 5 for me, though, I think does have a lot more going for it in the sense that it starts really well. I think that first initial portion of the season is very strong and the back half of the season is also particularly strong. So it starts well and it ends well. Uh, and also, I think the addition of Nora Allen onto the show did provide a really nice sort of foil for Barry and Iris. It gave them some nice scenes together. It was kind of good to see them as parents, you know, kind of while it was premature, it was still kind of cool to see that because it added a new kind of dimension to Barry and to Iris that we've not really seen before and their conflict uh, that kind of arose throughout the season and the mystery surrounding the sort of distant relationship between Nora and Iris I thought was really entertaining. Uh, but season five to me, unfortunately, I think falls apart in the middle. This <laughs> the season has a really boring stretch of episodes in the middle. And honestly, I think if you watch this season as a binge, it wouldn't be anywhere near as bad. It's just because someone like me and, and a lot of you watching this video, you know, we watch these episodes week for week as they come out. And that means that, you know, we spend an entire week, you know, festering over an episode, thinking about it, you know, thinking about all the bad things that happened in it, all the good things that happened in it. So, you know, 
when you're doing that for sort of six, seven weeks, and that's six, seven episodes that aren't particularly good or exciting, it becomes kind of, ref it reflects badly on the season, and it kind of makes me look back at the season and go, yeah, that was really boring, even though if you watched it as a binge, I don't think it would feel that way. Uh, and also, the, the main criticism for season five is the villain. Cicada was dreadful. Not only was he terrible because they had to drag him out, but he was also just a really dumb villain because he comes out, and I thought it was a really cool idea when they said what we were doing with him because when they first announced Cicada was the villain, I was like, okay, I don't like that, but let's see how it goes. And then they actually said what his plan was, which is that he's like basically a metahuman serial killer. I was like, okay, that's cool. That's very different and very dark. But they made Cicada such a stupid, dumb villain who just had powers that were never explained. He could just fly off somehow. He had the dagger, which could just, you know, uh, that could uh, make the powers useless, which, again, was a cool idea, but it wasn't really used particularly well, and it was very inconsistent in when it worked. Um, also, Chris Klein, who portrayed him, just not a good choice whatsoever. I don't know who thought a guy from American Pie would make a very terrifying serial killer. Um, and the voice that he used, you know, as Cicada wasn't terrible, but given the fact that he used that voice just when he was all in Dwyer was just really strange. Um, and then the fact that they nearly got him off the show and nearly got rid of Cicada, and I thought, okay, they're actually getting rid of Cicada in the middle of the season, that's great. But then they bring in, and I quote, Cicada 2, which just completely set me off. And I was like, okay, this is ridiculous now. They bring in his niece from the future to be another version of Cicada. And it's ridiculous to me because she shows up out of nowhere and people are like, oh my god, we just took it out, we just took out Cicada, who's this new person? And they keep calling it a he as well, even though it's incredibly obvious when you first see her as a woman. Like, the female, the female form and the male form are very easy to distinguish, but they kind of go on this thing for a while trying to find out who it is, even though it's very obvious. Um, but like I say, season 5, it does have its strong points. I think it starts well, I think it ends well. And I did like Nora being like the main crux of the season. This does have some really good episodes as well, like King Shark versus Gorilla Grodd, which was fantastic. The Godspeed episode was great. Um, there's a lot of really strong elements in this season. It's just, unfortunately, I think that middle bit where they're trying to catch Cicada and they just can't gets really boring and really frustrating at times. And also just Cicada as a villain as a whole was a real letdown for this season because he could have been a really dark and really cool villain and he just wasn't. Coming in at number four, I'm going to go with season three. Uh, season three, I actually think gets a bit of a negative rap on the fan base and or by the fan base. And I actually think season three is a pretty decent season of The Flash. For one, I actually really like the darker tone. I know I said when I was talking about season four that I was looking forward to the lighter tone. And while that was true, I actually really like the darker tone for The Flash because I think for the first two seasons being fairly light, I thought it was nice to kind of bring Barry into reality a little bit. And I enjoyed that. Also, I think the season had a lot of really great storylines for the characters. You know, I really enjoyed Caitlyn's storyline. Killer Frost really kind of came into fruition in this season. That was nice to see. Uh, I think that Barry had a really good arc throughout it as well. This also had a lot of really great cameos as well, like Wally really coming into his own in this season. Like Kid Flash was a big part of this season, which I really enjoyed. Uh, Keenan Lonsdale as Wally West was a great casting for the character. Of course, we saw him in season two, but in season three is where he truly becomes Kid Flash, and that was great to see. And I just think that this cast really sort of branched out in the season. Of course, we did have, you know, HR coming in. That was our version of Wells for the season. Tracy Brand came in, who unfortunately never came back. We also had Tom Felton playing Julian Albert, who was a really cool character who they never brought back, unfortunately. Um, I just think that this season has a lot of really good stuff. The action was great. Like, we got the Gorilla City two-parter in this, which CGI-wise looked fantastic for TV, especially for the CW. Like, it looked amazing. And those episodes were just really fun as well. Um, now, the main problem with this season, as I've mentioned in the last two, is the villain. Um, Savitar, oh, Savitar could have been so cool. And I don't hate Savitar at all. I think Savitar's actually a pretty decent villain. The only problem with Savitar is they dragged it out way too long to reveal who it was. And the worst part was is that pretty much the entire fan base had, by I'd say around episode 18, had basically uncovered who Savitar was. Basically everyone knew who Savitar was by this point. We all knew it was some kind of version of Barry. Yeah, we didn't know the specific nature of it. Like obviously we didn't know it was a future time remnant of Barry, but we knew it was some version of Barry. And, you know, having an evil version of Barry, like an evil Barry speedster as the villain, is such a cool concept because it reflects really well for this season because obviously with this season he's dealing with Flashpoint and, you know, the, the consequences of his actions as a speedster. And that's literally what Savitar is. Like, he's literally a result of Barry's actions. And I thought that was such a cool idea. 
And unfortunately, while Savitar, I think, was really cool and really interesting, they just dragged it out so long to reveal who it was that by the time they actually do it, you're kind of done with the character because they're just wasting him and just spinning his wheels. And even though the scenes with Savitar, when you actually know who he is and you see like Grant Gustin playing two different characters at once, acting against himself, it's great. It's so good. It's really good stuff. But they just, unfortunately, it's, there's not enough of it. And also, Savitar just made no sense as a character. Um, the writers just contradicted themselves. They didn't know how to explain how he existed, even though the actual explanation we get for him, if you try and draw it out, if you try and put it all together, I've tried to do it for many years now, it just doesn't make sense. Savitar does not make sense. Um, and also, that brings me into my next negative for Season 3, which is Flashpoint. Flashpoint was completely wasted. I thought Flashpoint was going to be, you know, the entire storyline of this season, pretty much, or it was going to be, like, the big thing behind it. And I guess you could argue that, yes, Flashpoint is kind of the reason why everything in this season happens, but it's not the Flashpoint storyline. Like, the Flashpoint storyline, if you can call it that, is just the is just the premiere it's just episode one like episode one you get the flashpoint universe and yeah that's cool that's fun and it's a great episode but beyond that it just doesn't exist and it's a real shame so for me season three i think it's a lot of fun i think this is a good season i really enjoy it it just has a couple of missteps that really bring it down from going into that top three Coming in at number three, we have the latest, Season 6. Now, this is obviously where the new season falls on my ranking. And for me, Season 6 was the true return to form for this series I've been waiting for. This truly felt like The Flash to me, and I loved everything about it. Like, this season, I genuinely think was fantastic. And it's kind of interesting to me. You know, I'm seeing online, you know, people are now talking about the season as a whole. And a lot of people are saying that they're not really a fan of this season. There are others who, like me, think it's a great season. But there are also a fair few who don't, and I think that's really interesting. Um, but for me personally, Eric Wallace coming in as the new showrunner saved this season from the word go. Because he came out of Comic-Con and he said, right, I have an idea. This season is being split into two parts, graphic novel number one and graphic novel number two. And that was the best thing that could happen to this series. Because the main complaint you will see from more generic critics about these shows, like not people like me who are kind of like, you know, into this specific niche, more like, you know, your general tv reviewers they'll say that these shows are too dragged out and the storylines are too dragged out because they have to go over 23 22 episodes and that is true there are a couple of exceptions i mean i think flash season one arrow season one arrow season five i don't think they really suffer from that but for the majority a lot of them do and flash season five i think is the biggest example because they stretched out that cicada storyline way too long this season just doesn't have that problem and it's fantastic you had the first half of the season that built up to Crisis with Bloodwork, and that was a great arc. I love Bloodwork. Senhil Ramamurthy was amazing as Ramsey Rosso, and the way that all built up to Crisis really made a lot of sense, because unlike Arrow, which really focused on building up to Crisis, which, as you guys know, I loathed, um, I think that The Flash, I think, works a lot better building to Crisis, because they've been setting this up since the pilot. So I think that that worked for The Flash, whereas it just didn't work for Arrow for me personally at all. So building up to that, I think was a really strong first arc. And then as we move into the second half of the season, we are dealing with Black Hole and Joseph Carver and Eve McCulloch. And that was also a really interesting arc. You know, I think it's kind of been referred to as the Mirrorverse arc. And we had all that stuff. You know, Iris was given this big storyline, which I think, you know, Iris has been waiting for. While, as I said in the last episode, or in my, in my review, sorry, um, it doesn't seem to be the storyline that I think everyone would have wanted and that I would have personally written for Iris myself, it was still a good storyline nonetheless and I still enjoyed it. So for me, season six, I think was great. I think it just did so much right and all the characters got so well handled. You know, I think Caitlin had a great story. Cisco did a lot of good stuff. I think that Iris got so much work. Barry for once actually seemed like the focus of the show. There was just so much good stuff in it and I think it really benefited from this showrunner of Eric Wallace coming in and I hope he sticks with the show for a while because he, he is the best thing that's happened to this. I was never really a fan of Todd Helbing who was the showrunner for the last couple of years. I just never felt like he was excited or enthused about the show. Eric Wallace is the complete opposite and I'm so happy he's here because this season I genuinely believe was fantastic because of him. Now coming in at number two we have season two. Uh, season two is very close to my top spot, which obviously you already know what that is. But season two, I think, did everything that the first season did and just continued it at such a high quality. Like this season really just went for it. Like season one surprised me with how kind of 
far it went in regards to the multiverse and time travel. Like, I didn't expect that in the first season. I thought, okay, this is going to be a bit more reserved, but it wasn't. But season two goes full with it with the multiverse because this season really focuses on Earth 2 and this is really where we get the introduction to the multiverse for the Arrowverse as a whole. We go to Earth 2, we get to see all these different villains and we get to see different versions of these characters. Like we get to see like, you know, obviously this is where Black Siren was introduced who of course became a big character on Arrow ultimately, but we also got to see like the Earth 2 Cisco, Earth 2 Joe, Earth 2 Barry, Earth 2 uh, Iris, Earth 2 Firestorm. Like we got a lot of really awesome stuff in here. Uh, also we got the introduction of Jax as well who obviously went on to Legends and he was a great character and he came from this which was great the main villain of this season oh Zoom was great like I love Zoom like bringing in Hunter Zolomon as the villain like the way they introduced him as being like the fake Jay Garrick and then you know we all thought he was this awesome hero from Earth 2 and then it turns out he was Zoom great reveal it really worked for the audience it worked for the characters uh, particularly Caitlyn I think that this just was a great villain for this season because he was violent he was genuinely disturbing and the way he you know proved himself as a villain by killing Henry Allen was one of the most devastating moments on The Flash. Um, I think it was really emotional, it was really gut-punching, and it worked so well for the show. So for me, Season 2, I just think that the season had a lot riding on it. It really felt like it stepped up from the first season in regards to expanding the world of The Flash. And while I don't think it quite reached the heights, it still had so much greatness within it and so many fantastic ideas that it explored fully. It makes it super memorable and one that I really want to go back to many, many times. But taking the top spot is The Flash Season 1. Uh, yeah, where it all started. I mean, Season 1 for me is just so memorable, so much fun, so rewatchable. And this is really what The Flash was always meant to be. I mean, this season is just has this sense of fun and freedom about it. You know, The Flash was always a fun character. And I do like how he's evolved throughout the season. Like, I don't really agree with the people who say that he should have stayed like this. Because I think The Flash needs to grow. He needs to develop. As he gets older, you know, he needs to grow. Uh, but in this season in particular, I think it really works making having him this fun, almost irresponsible hero. You know, he's this young guy who gets speedster powers, which, you know, that's a fun power. And you get to see him have fun with it, which I I really enjoy. Also, this really introduced sort of the metahuman of the week thing, which Arrow had been doing, but not to the extent that Flash does it. So Flash kind of introduced this old the high idea of metahuman of the week, you know, with the particle accelerator. Not only did it affect Barry, but it affected loads of other people within Central City. Uh, and it really established Central City as a character within itself. Also, this introduced us to the cast as well with Iris, sort of, we got hints of the love interest there uh joe coming in that real father figure for barry we got introduced to the characters of star labs including harrison wells of course uh we even got like eddie who was really great uh ronnie we just got some really great characters throughout this season and really established the cast for the show going forward uh but the best thing about this season 100 percent without a doubt was absolutely eobard thorn aka the reverse flash as the villain easily i mean i could honestly say this might be the greatest villain in the arrowverse i mean reverse flash was just outstanding like the way he comes in you know it was genuinely treacherous what he did and the way he kind of comes in you don't suspect him for a minute because obviously harrison wells is not reverse flash it's eobard thorn and we see that he has this ability to basically become you know to take the face of different people and the way he's able to manipulate the team, you know, Cisco truly felt betrayed by him because he felt like it was his mentor. Same with Barry, you know, and I think that the way Reverse Flash comes in and the way he's recurred, not only throughout the Flash, but throughout the Arrowverse as a whole, just shows why he's such a great villain. And I love Tom Cavanaugh as the Reverse Flash. I also love Matt Letcher as the Reverse Flash. We got both of them in this season. I think they're both great in the role. And the fact that, it's, you know, they're able to use both those actors, I think is really strong. So for me, season one, it's just the one that I think about the most. It's the one I go back to the most. It's the one that I think is the most memorable. And I think this is easily one of the strongest seasons of The Flash. It's one of the most emotional seasons of the Arrowverse. Like the finale of this season is genuinely heartbreaking. I've, I cry every time when I watch it. I think that The Flash season one just really nailed it. Like as far as like a Flash TV series or just even a live action interpretation of The Flash, this absolutely nailed it. And if this Ezra Miller Flash movie ever happens, I don't think it will have as great of a first impression on me that this first season did. They just absolutely nailed it and really supplanted why Grant Gustin was perfect for this role. 
So there you have it guys, there's my personal ranking of all six seasons of The Flash from the worst to the best. Of course, as I mentioned before, this is just my personal ranking, so make sure you leave your own ranking in the comment section down below. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. I'm also very excited to see, of course, where season six lands on your personal ranking, because I've heard many conflicting uh, opinions about season six, so I'm excited to see what you guys think about it. But anyway, with all that said, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like, and also make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more DC content or Flash videos just like this. And I hope to see you guys again in the next video.